Right. Today I am with Brooke Stevens and I'm delighted to have this conversation. You are a parent who's been working to get some of the really questionable books out of schools. And I'd love to hear more about that. Could you maybe just start by introducing yourself and, and tell a little bit about what you've been up to? Yeah, my name is Brooke Stevens and I'm on the board of Utah Parents United. I moved to Utah from California to get away from the insanity. And unluckily I found that it's everywhere and you can't. And so you do have to stand and fight it. Um, I have four children aged 19, 16, 10, and 11. And, um, you know, they're every, but like probably every parent who's experienced um, pornography coming into their kids or even accidentally seeing it. And I've seen the damage that it's done. So I also, I was married to a sex addict before. Mm -hmm. And so just the struggle that he's had in his life um, and wanting to prevent that um, addiction. It's truly an addiction in the brain and the wires are set and it makes you feel shame and makes you feel guilt and just constant trying to get over that. And I didn't want children to have to suffer that, especially at the hands of, um, you know, trusted people in the schools. So, so yeah, they can't control what's on their screens, but they can control the books that are in their, um, in the schools and they can say no to it. And I thought if I just showed it to them, they would be embarrassed and quietly remove it. And sadly, I found that that is not the case, that there are a bunch of propaganda and lies spun around it so that people aren't able to clearly discern truth from the lies. And that is making people quickly buy into things without doing their own research. And so I built a website called ratedbooks.org that has um, given people the tools to see, is this explicit content and is it appropriate for children? And they can make their own decision instead of just easily buying into the propaganda and the rhetoric that is pervasive throughout um, national media. So when did you first start to notice that there were books in the schools that you found concerning? A parent e emailed me and at Utah Parents United, we have the privilege of getting parent emails who will show us problems that are going on around the state. And she sent in excerpts from All Boys Aren't Blue. And it's about two 11 year old cousins who are um, boys, cousins who are sexually active and what they do and how and everything. And it's, it's quite explicit. And I was just aghast. And so I said, this is really in schools. And I began to look. What and schools was this in? Was it high schools, middle schools, high school, middle school. Okay. Um, and I've only found a couple in elementary schools, a couple um, of, of copies explicit. of that book. Or, not that oh, book, okay, okay but just explicit books okay and um and so found this was kind of shocked and i didn't think it was in my kids school mm -hmm. and then i went to a national conference and accidentally i had to charge my computer and so i stayed for a presentation i wasn't planning on staying for mm -hmm. and you know, those little serendipitous things that we think are coincidental that really are meant to kind of shape our path just because mm -hmm. I had to charge my computer. I got this whole presentation and then I ended up sitting next to a woman who showed me how to search my child's school. Mm -hmm. And she gave me a list of all of these books. And I went in and I, when I got home, I began to take this list and search the schools and Every time my stomach would drop when I would see it, I'm like, this is here. Wow. And these, this wasn't even the worst books. These were books. This was before we had the rating system. This was before we had these, I think we were close to 500 books that are rated now with this rating system. Okay. And I, I was just silently sending to the, not silently, but just like quietly sending them to my principal, like, Hey, this is here. Look at this. You need to get it out. Mm -hmm. And, um, and he, <laughs> he said, okay, don't worry about it. It's taken care of. I'm like, Oh yay, Thank you so much. And then I went, I, you know, at being married to a sex addict before you, you kind of like, you, you kind of like, okay. And then you go and check everything yourself. <laughs> and so 
I went to my neighbor. I'm like, hey, can you go ask your son to see if he can check these books out of the library? And sure enough, he was able to. And wow. so I emailed him like, what's going on? You told me it was taken care of. Mm -hmm. And I guess he had meant just for my daughter to check out those specific books. Oh, he put a block on her account. So she wasn't able to access those. Yes. Which okay. you can do in the school. But I was like, oh, that's not good enough because, you know, the definition of grooming is a trusted adult um, lowering the, what, the acceptance of what is permissible sexually, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And so saying, hey, this is all this content is permissible. A trusted adult tells you, a teacher tells you, that's that's inappropriate, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, they're not intentionally trying to do anything that at least that we hope and know of, but just providing that is not good. And so he told me the challenge process. I went through, I went through the challenge process, and luckily they gave me what we needed to pass legislation to get the, to hopefully get the books out. We're still in process now, mm -hmm. but um, I showed the state superintendent one of the books that had been retained, um, very descriptive um, mm -hmm. and of a sexual encounter. And um, she was like, what? Mm -hmm. And so right before the committee meeting in the legislature, and then they called her up impromptu to testify and luckily I'd shown that to her. So she couldn't say, oh, we don't have any porn in our schools, mm -hmm. which is, is what they say. A lot mm -hmm. of them will say, we don't have porn. We don't have obscenity. We wouldn't do that. But they're using these words in a very specific context to be true. And that's mm -hmm. what we have to prepare for is to say, okay, then I'm going to say sexually explicit content because pornography is something you get to be turned on and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, no, this is to describe what happened to this man's life. We weren't meaning to turn anybody on and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Or they say that obscenity isn't there because obscenity is defined by the community standards. And in court, they have tried to define obscenity, but the defense goes and gets all the subscriptions to Pornhub. And then with those mm -hmm. subscriptions, they say, this isn't obscene because so many people have subscriptions to Pornhub. Mm -hmm. So they are... They're saying there's no porn on, and no obscenity based on those narrow definitions. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so if you understand that and say sexually explicit content, you know, they'll probably redefine that too. Mm -hmm. And even the book rater, um, the one who's making all these ratings and has, has done a fabulous job of using the movie rating system. Um, mm -hmm. to define which things are rated and how much and whatever. It's very spelled out. Everything is defined. And I'll be able to show you that later. Mm -hmm. um, but <clears throat> even with all of those definitions, you mm -hmm. know, you still have to, you still have to go see for yourself because mm -hmm. she will not disclose. People say, hey, we want a, a nationally certified librarian to give these definitions. And she won't disclose her, um, the alphabet behind her name that she has, because the best way to rate things is based on your morality and your discernment, which doesn't come from degrees. I mm -hmm. mean, it's helpful. She has, she has those, but even the movie rating system is done by parents. It's okay. not these people who are like, oh, they have a degree in psychology and child psychology and they know child development. They're like, no, we have parents who rate it and who grade our movies. Mm -hmm. So um, there we go. Yeah, it sounds like you're, it's quite, it's been quite a, a slog for you. So you first started to notice, you noticed this book, you were able to um, find that it was actually in your child's school. You were surprised to find that these, these explicit books are actually available to your own kids. Mm -hmm. And when you contacted the principal, you got, he sort of assuaged your, your worry and said, it's fine. I've taken care of it. And you took that to mean that he meant that he was yeah. going to take care of getting this out of the school. I object to this. He agrees with me. We're going to see this go away. But later on, you found that it was just like a special carve out for your family because you objected to it. He was treating you like you had some special problem with this instead of taking care of it in terms of community standards. And as you've gone through this, there's more and more. And I'm curious about the rating system and, and how, um, 
how this was developed and what what methods are being used to say, you know, this book is appropriate for this age or, or that age? What does that look like and how can parents use that system? Okay, great. Let me share it with you. I'm just going to share my screen really fast. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is booklooks.org is where all of the ratings happen. And mm -hmm. so this is the rating system that she uses. And she's very good at, you know, telling the history of it. And, you know, the movie rating system said they'd sue her if they say rated R because, you know, that's their copyright, mm -hmm. NC-17. So it's rated on a scale of zero to five. Okay. And um, so... And she even has, you know, minor restricted, no minors. This, a three is the same thing as rated R. Okay. This is the same as NC-17, PG-13 is a two, PG is a one, and G is zero. So, but we do have this five, which is NC-17 plus. Okay. And um, then she explains what is, you know, under here. Okay. And so this is how she writes it. And- then we go, and so take some time, booklooks.org rating system to mm -hmm. understand this. And then we go down into the definitions and she defines violence, sexuality, you okay. know, aberrant, deviant. So um, some school districts have adopted this. It's been really nice um, because the definitions are where people struggle. And, you know, the Bible was removed in Davis School District, not because it broke the law, which is, but because of vulgarity and violence. Now, it's kind of funny because they had no definition of what vulgarity and violence was. So mm -hmm. having a definition is really important um, as you're going through this work. Mm -hmm. um, so here is her definition. And then she has all of, and she has a team of people. I say she because I'm, she's the one I interact with all the time. Okay. Um, but there are, as she does have a team who helps her and to stay consistent. And then how we go, are you involved in that? Are you part of that team? Um, so I formed a national coalition, uh, just of people who I had come across through my Laverna in the library, Facebook page mm -hmm. and people from other States were coming and, and participating in our group. That was, you know, just for Utah, actually, I'm going to back up just a little bit. Indiana started a web a Facebook group called Mary in the Library. Okay. And I copied the picture and I did it for the USA so they could forward to their state and see if there were locations of those books. Okay. So Mary in the Library Facebook page is where I went and I saw all these excerpts of books. And then I started forwarding them to my Utah specific page, which I called Laverna in the Library, Mary's Utah. I mean, Utah's Mary in the library. Okay. And you'll notice there are other Mary in the libraries because I announced that at a national um, meeting for, for um, parent advocacy groups is to go to their uh, start this Facebook page in their state to see mm -hmm. if these books were there. Okay. And so um, I forgot your question. Oh, just asking how you are involved in the rate rated um, okay. the booklooks.org. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so she must have found me through that Facebook page. And then I started finding people who were talking a lot. We formed private meetings on zoom to mm -hmm. do the issue. And she came to us and said, Hey, I want to be able to distribute these reports for free <clears throat> to any groups that want them. Mm -hmm. And so we started disseminating them and I created as well. Let me just show you. This is my site of her reports from booklooks.org, oops, rated books. I forgot the S, ratedbooks.org. And this is how we're associated is I just have her um, reports here. I just have a different interface because hers is apolitical mm -hmm. and she just wants to get the information of what the books are in here. Mine is more politically motivated. Um, it's to make a change advocacy work. I guess you would say mm -hmm. so that parents can see it. So, <clears throat> okay. so that's, there's a different sorting capability. You could keyword search here um, mm -hmm. to access the content on her site. You go to the book reports right here, and then you would click by the, um, the R to see all of them and you would see their okay. rating. And just because it's on here doesn't mean that it's objectionable. 
It just means she's read it. You get to see how she actually applies the rating system. Mm -hmm. So this is here. We'll go and see this slick sheet for um, Brandt by Chuck Palinwit Nook. And um, just give you a look at what this is. This is a four. This wait, maybe it's a five. That was a four. This is the, okay. the author of Fight Club. Um, so I could imagine it would be uh, not for young kids. Yes. And so I don't know if you have to give a warning before you show this, but this is just something, this is called a slick sheet. This is a one pager that you show to people and say, hey, can you get this out of your library, please? This is really bad. So this and is- this a, book is in schools? Yes, it is. We actually made a map of wow. where all of these books are. So now is this just in high schools or- how do you know what schools this is in? I mean, at high schools is bad enough, but I'm wow. So yeah, it's pretty bad, right? And well, it's, it's not even the really worst. Explicit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I try not to write it because it truly it's erotica or some mm -hmm. violent erotica. Yeah, it is violent. Yes, and one of their excuses. I'm going to stop sharing. Well, should yeah. I leave this up or stop sharing um, my screen right now? I think if people want to read more about this, they can pause the video and. And okay. Read this. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the, I'm sorry. I don't like to look at it very no, much, okay. but I get angry all day and mm -hmm. it well, really it makes, takes away. It's really upsetting to think that's in there for kids to access. So, so yeah, right. we're, how do you find out what, what, uh, like that, using that book as an example, how do you find out what level of school kids that's being offered to? Okay. So I'm going to show you on this page and okay just so your listeners can know how to do it for themselves. So ratedbooks.org, mm -hmm. if you click on getting started, mm -hmm. we have tutorials for them. Um, the first thing is they can connect with their, whoever's local. We have mm -hmm. a map that shows you um, across the United States. And this is just people who have, um, who have signed up and want to be here. So they can come okay. here and it's labeled by state or nationally. And then you could find like, let's go to, um, let me see, here's booklooks.org. She's the one who does all the ratings and here's her website and she has a contact form on there. Okay. But that's so you can get in touch. And if you want to be added to this list, you click on this tiny URL right here. Mm -hmm. And so this is how you get started. We have a video tutorial. Here's a list of the rated book reviews. So these are the ones that you're going to want to run through um, your school. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. But these are all the books we have ratings for. So you'll notice that these books are labeled four and five. Mm -hmm. This tab is zero th through three. Now there are some twos that can be explicit as well. And that has a lot of gender ideology or maybe oh. masturbation or, and then the threes mm -hmm. are also, so there's a you go lot back real quick to the, the page that says that gives the rating? Cause I, maybe we should read those off for anybody who's just listening to this so that they can understand what we mean by um, ones, twos, threes, et cetera. So it says zero is for everyone. Content is appropriate for all ages. And it, uh, under that, it says mild, inexplicit violence, no hate, no nudity, no profanity, no references to sexuality, gender ideology, or sexual activities, no drug or alcohol use. One, it says child guidance. Some content may not be appropriate for very young children. Mild violence, mild slash infrequent hate, mild infrequent profanity, non-sexual nudity, including excluding genitalia, no references to sexual activities, no drug or alcohol, inexplicit sexuality, inexplicit gender ideology. And then two, it's just going up from there. So two, moderate violence, hate, profanity, non-sexual nudity involving genitalia. So at two, it could involve um, involve that. So, but it's non-sexual. Okay. Um, it might that... be like instructional. Okay. Instructional. Okay. I'm trying to picture what that is, but, uh, three, uh, it says minor restricted under 18 requires guidance of parent or guardian and it's excessive or explicit violence, extreme or frequent hate, excessive or frequent uh, profanity, References to sexual activities not involving penetration, cunnilingus, fellatio, or ejaculation, drug or alcohol abuse. And then by the time you get to four, it says explicit nudity, 
this is for adult content, no child under 18, no minors, explicit sexual nudity, depictions of sexual organs in a state of arousal. And then it says obscene in quotes, references to sexual activities involving anal, oral, or vaginal intercourse, and then more things. Um, and then by the time you're up at five, it says aberrant content, adult only, explicit references to aberrant sexual activities, sexual assault, battery, bestiality, or sadomasochistic abuse. So that's the rating scale. So uh, you just based on this, it, it does seem like you would not necessarily think it appropriate for anything a, a three or above to be present for kids to access if this, you know, based on this rating scale. Right. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. So thank you for clearing that up. Now we have a list of all of the books that she has done. Okay. And so these are all the fives, There's a lot and of fives there. And so these are books mm -hmm. that she has reviewed or books that are in schools that she has reviewed. Um, she only reviews them if she finds them in a school. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah. And okay. so, you know, it might be one school in New Jersey, right? But she okay. gets it and then she does a review. And so, um, but one of the things the media says is, you know, we don't want to teach history or we don't want, we're trying to silence the voice of the marginalized. Mm -hmm. So we had a volunteer go through these books and on Goodreads went through and see how the people on Goodreads the tags that they put on these books. So these are thousands of tags. And if it had a tag at all for having racial discrimination as a theme or LGBTQ as a theme, then it was noted in this right here. Okay. And so, you know, it had to be listed as a theme. You don't just say, oh, there's an LGBTQ character in there or, you know, racial, there, mm -hmm. was, there was a black guy in chapter seven or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's not what we were screening for, but you can see that this isn't the main impetus of it. It's the okay. rating system. And okay. so to just like put that to rest and say, okay, that's your argument. It's not true. Mm -hmm. Let's go look at what this is. Um, okay. So then you click on all of the tiny URLs and this is so the reason we did tiny URLs is so you can send them to the school or parents um, and easily find it. So okay. Will you so, give an example of that? What that's what happens if you click on one of those? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Let me just find here is a book that was um so I'm clicking on the tiny URL for tricks. Okay. And this was challenged in Jordan School District in Utah. And it went all the way through the appeals. So the local school plus the district level, and they said this book is fine for students. And this is the slick sheet. So this is one where it gives excerpts from the book. That it, that demonstrate the material on which that ba that rating is based. Yes, and so okay. in Utah we have a very very clear law that says um, that if it has a description or depiction of sexual intercourse or and all of these things, then um, it is has no value for minors. And obviously this goes against the law, but they're still breaking yeah. it in Utah. So. It's a constant battle. So this pro provides just a snapshot of what's objectionable so that, that the parent has something ready to hand to the uh, legislator or the school board official and can easily and quickly reference the parts of the book that are that are that the objection is based on. Yes. And you'll notice on the website that it says there may be a variance of 10 pages before or after for the page number because of different ISBN numbers, different oh, versions. Okay. Also, if the reader was reading it in an ebook. Okay. So you kind of have to look for it, but you can keyword search it in Oceans of PDF, which has many of these books in a PDF. And if you even have it in Libby app, you keyword search these same quotes. And that's how I find exactly where they are sometimes. So, okay. so verify it. So actually to get the law passed, I went and purchased these books mm -hmm. and put the stickers in them and put them on the legislature's floor so they could see with the school. Mm -hmm. Actually, some of the books I had taken from the school. So it said like Davis County or Davis Public Schools. So they could see that it was there because most people won't believe it. They don't want to. So that's a, that's the first barrier mm -hmm. is they don't want to believe this because if you do believe it, if you do see it, you're required to take action. You mm -hmm. can't just, you can't just be like, oh yeah, I know. And it's okay. You know, because <laughs> then you're complicit in the action. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, 
Okay. Well, thank you for showing this example. So I getting you off on tangents. Thanks for Sorry. going through this. It's really an interesting process that you've got here and it looks like it's a great resource. Yeah. And so this is good. I'm going to search a school for you to see okay. right now, if we have great. anything at your local school, there's a video tutorial, but mm -hmm. I am just going to um, do it for you. Okay. So um, you go to gofollit.com, A-A-S-P forward slash UI forward slash pick. Okay. And then what is your school? Um, you could put in, um, I guess, Snohomish High School. S-N-O-H-O-M-I-S-H. -S okay. Yeah. yeah. So we'll go see who, and I know I just keyword search by author because that's easier. And I'm going to the back office because sometimes I can search by the whole district that way. Um, okay. Some districts are locked down. You can only search a school, but I'm going to go see if yours can be searched. Okay. Yours can be searched okay. in the whole district. Okay. And so, so we can see middle school and elementary as well this way. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to check Chuck Paula Nick Nook. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, you don't have any. Okay. That's great. Okay, so now we're gonna check um, Sarah Moss. See what she has in here. Okay, so it looks like you have Empire of Storms in, let's see which school. Um, you have it at Glacier Peak High School and you have it at Snohomish High School. Okay. And so if you want to challenge this, there's a process you would go to your principal and see what it is. And that's but the book we were just looking at? No, I'm going to show you the book. I just okay, am okay. keyword searching, Okay. but I'm going to go look at Empire of Storms right now. So okay. I'm going back to rated books and keyword searching Empire of Storms. And here is the slick sheet for this book that is in both of those schools. Okay. So people can stop here and look at this if they want to look at it. I don't want to read it out loud, but um, right. <laughs> so this for anybody who's just listening on um, the podcast app, you might want to watch the video for this one if you're interested. And so you could take this and and go challenge the book, mm -hmm. and then go back. That's and certainly that... looked like erotica to me. Yes, it is. And so she has a lot of books that are wow. are like that. Um, sixty three. So we would even have to to do that. Okay. Um, and then I'll just do one more. Uh, Colleen Hoover has a lot of books that she even she labels as for a mature audience only. Okay. Um, I don't notice these that we have a report for these. So it looks like they may have cleaned it up. Maybe you have parents who are already involved. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And let me just go find another author. Um, oh, Ellen Hopkins. Okay, I know some of these are threes. I think identical might be a four. Okay. Uh, let me just click on identical and see where it is. Okay. And that's at Glacier Peak. And okay. then I would go back and I'm just kind of giving you a, what did I say it was? In, it's called identical. Okay. But always go look for yourself because, um, It's, you know, some of the ratings, people say this should be a five or this isn't bad. This should be a two. Mm -hmm. So so there's some subjectivity to it. Yes. And so it's really nice to get familiar with the system as well. So it looks like this is a four. And then okay, she and gives us. Yeah, she wrote that. Do you want to read that out? The summary of concerns. This book contains explicit sexual activities, including sexual assault and child molestation, violence, including self-harm and suicidal ideations profanity and derogatory terms and drug and alcohol abuse. Now, now when I put this up here on my Facebook, uh -huh. I get banned from Facebook for like 30 days. Just, just for putting for, this up? Yeah, for pushing this. And the only thing that gets me out is usually the use of the word, like the N word or um, faggot or, you know, mm -hmm. those, those derogatory terms. But this one has the F word 36 times. And 
but it's still, it will say, you know, they're, they're, I'm trying to get the book out and Facebook's like, get out of here. You know, wow. <laughs> it's amazing. That's been so interesting to see these parents who read the books that they find in their children's libraries at school board meetings. And then they get silenced because they're saying inappropriate things. And it just seems like that's, mm -hmm. doesn't that demonstrate the nature of the problem right there? Oh yeah. And if, if the FCC, it's not allowed by the FCC, people are trying to do laws now based on if it's not good enough for the airways, it's not um, good enough for the kids. And yeah. Well, if you can't put this stuff on Facebook without being banned, but it's okay for your kids to read, that's, that's really interesting. That says right. a lot. There's a book that's rated three called Flamer. And I'm just going to show that to you right now. Okay. Um, because this is what Facebook recently removed uh, just two days ago. And um, let me just see if I have a, a screenshot of it. <clears throat> oh, so it was this image right here. And this is actually oh, the, okay. the proper way to slit your wrist because it's harder to, to whatever. So if you go oh, like this. Okay. And most people don't know that. And so Facebook said no, but per their standards, which are adult standards, right? Okay. This is rated three and this is in my child's junior high and they still haven't removed it. It's okay. been challenged. It breaks the law. Wow. It's violent. It's vulgar. Plus, wow. you know, it has very descriptive things of, um, you know, watching pornography, yeah. masturbating. Mm -hmm. And let me just see what the other, I, there's one more I think I want to show you. Um, it's where they're all, you know, it's group masturbation and they're oh um, drinking drinking it and oh what yes i know right and, and, and this and is in junior yeah. high junior oh. high Let me, okay here it is and this is a three guys this is why oh, i say my gosh read the excerpts and because <sighs> you can't just go by the numbers yeah this is being provided to kids by adults yeah this is grooming right so <laughs> by a trusted adult lowering their sexual um inhibitions that's the word i was looking for mm -hmm, mm -hmm. saying this is acceptable you know so wow anyway wow. i'll get out of here i don't want to keep looking at it <laughs> yeah yeah it's pretty bad <laughs> um okay the, so this then, seems like it's it's a constant like it's a I just picture Sisyphus push, pushing the rock uphill. I mean, these books must be just come more books coming out all the time. How do you stay on top of this? Oh, it's awesome because we have a team of people because once they see it, they're like, I have to get involved and they do. And I have that. So, so many people across the state are helping. Um, at first I was just trying to get the dialogue going, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. like to counter that, Oh, you're a book banner. You're going to burn the books. And I was like, no, just take a look for yourself. No, just take a look for yourself. That was always my answer. That's why yeah. we have the website. And then, so we have people researching and this is actually really phenomenal. This is our spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. And um, in order to make it better, you can look at any one of these books and see where they are in the 11 or so districts we've searched in Utah. So here is that All Boys Aren't Blue. This is the first book that mm -hmm. um, I got out. But this is gives a description of where it is in the school district so parents can find it, as well as links to the book. And so here is the, um, this is the slick sheet. This is the very first book that got me onto it. Okay. And, um, and this is the one that actually made, mm -hmm. I think, national news because the American Library Association has a hotline that you call, and they're so awesome, <laughs> I say that sarcastically, is that they have all their media contacts who will get out and ridicule and shame you mm -hmm. for trying to get rid of marginalized um, stories. And so they were on this so fast because they have, they have the money, the contacts to do this. So parents are getting shamed, but the good news is, is the tide is turning and um, we have really good media coverage now and um, a, a lot better than before that it's getting the truth out. Mm -hmm. So this is, there's that. And then wow. I'm just showing you how the maps work. Michigan has a map like this. I believe Georgia has a map like this. Okay. We're trying, we're working on a national map. We've collected um, 
proof from many states in our national book team that show you, I'm gonna just stop sharing my screen so I can find it without you seeing all of the crazy books I have in my, um, all the files I have in my life. <laughs> okay, so anyway, I'm not gonna bore you with that, but we've been collecting all the proof so that at a federal level, um, the Congress can do something. So we have lots of proof for that. It seems like, well, there's the problem of this, these books themselves. There's a the problem of this, this type of, well, these specific examples of literature being provided to children. But the bigger problem is why is this type of literature being selected and put into the schools? And I think that the, the banned book argument, the Euro book banner, I, I think that's, it, it's a, it's a, it's an argument that deliberately misses the point. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's, uh, it's just silly because it's not about banning a book. It's about what books should be selected for inclusion in a school library. That's not to say that these books can't exist in the world and that somebody doesn't have the right to write the kind of material that they want to write. It's just that school districts only have a limited number of books that they are able to select to provide to their kids. And why are they selecting this type of literature? And so what, that seems like the bigger question, what the heck is going on? What do you think is going on behind this? Why are these books being chosen? Um, I'm going to show you a clip right now. Okay. And uh, just a second, I have to share my screen. This is of the, um, the ALA's Office of Intellectual Freedom. Okay. And <clears throat> In it, she's talking about how they need to reframe the dialogue from explicit content to um, it's this is a plan two years in the making. So here she goes. Still no audio here. Oh, you don't you can't hear it? No, I can't hear it. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my Facebook post because I wrote down what she said. Okay, great. Um she said. The thing that needs to happen most is sustained messaging that reframes this issue that takes it away from the idea that these are sexually inappropriate for minors and promote them as diverse materials and programming that are about inclusion and fairness and protection of everyone's right to see themselves. This is from Deborah St Caldwell Stone, the legal counsel for the American Library Association. This has been an intentional push to sexualize children. Now, of course, they will claim something else. But back in the 1960s, when they were just when um, people were fighting obscenity just in the community for adults, it was librarians and the American Library Association behind them that was saying, "Don't censor us. We need free speech." So this has been decades of 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 this argument that it's against free speech. But obscenity never was free speech. Free speech is based on the ideas of sharing ideas, right? You don't want to cancel ideas. You want people to be able to talk about things and find out what's true. But pornography is never and was never upset, um, an idea, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's an obscenity. And so this has been a um, this has been part of the of the plan. And you know, I guess people say, you know, conspiracy theories or whatever, but this is well documented. This is her saying it for herself in a webinar. Um, so this is directly being promoted and pushed by the American Library Association. Oh yes, they have tons of stuff on, on it to help librarians who feel that free speech is being canceled. And also the American Library Association is the one who accredits the university programs for the library sciences. And so all the librarians, many of the librarians are getting this training. And Wyoming has broken with the American Library Association as far as being their source for all their documentation, which there's a lot of good in it too. But there's also this training that comes with it that's promoting this agenda that's sexualizing children and subversive content, you know, promoting that. And then also I believe Montana is trying to break from the American Library Association. And I really see this as like saving the very valuable um, craft of being a librarian. You know, they're needed, they help kids find books and the ALA is ruining it for them who love their professions. I've heard it from so many librarians. I love my job. I don't wanna quit it, but this is giving me a bad name. And this is, you know, so I think something 
there needs to be an alternate association than the ALA that people can join because even though they don't necessarily, I've spoken with people who have broken from the ALA and they said, we need an alternate association. They're like, actually, you don't. Mm -hmm. We can get you all the documentation and the forms and things that you need, but they feel they need one. And mm -hmm. and so, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. if we had an alternate, it would be good. <clears throat> there seems like there's some, there's, even if you can make a conceptual argument that it's that it's good to promote this type of thing for kids, there's a chasm between making that argument and then he, like reading one of these concrete examples out loud. I, how many of the people even who are promoting this stuff and access of young people to this stuff, how many of them would actually sit down and read this stuff out loud to a group of, of teenagers? Oh, that's a great point. And we actually, when we met with the school administration, we handed them binders with all of the excerpts printed out and they just closed it and wouldn't look at it. They even didn't in the look. Even in the legislative session, they had passed this book that was clearly pornographic, put it on the screen, and the legislator asked the district administrator to read it. Their eyes would not even go up to read it. And that's the problem, is we can't show this on the airwaves. We can't read it. People don't know what it is. And when they don't look, they're not confronted with just how vile it is and how it takes the light away inside of you. It really does. I feel darkness when I read this and that in and of it speaks for itself. And so if they're not reading it for themselves, then they more easily buy into mm -hmm. all of this propaganda and this rhetoric yeah. that it's needed yeah. and they're so blind and they're the ones leading it. So I just ask if you're an administrator, if you're an educator, please go and read this. And if you, if you think it's okay, go read it to your child. You know, I don't really want you to, but see, see I want you to see. If you're capable of doing that, if you really yeah. think it's appropriate for that. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's really, it's really shocking. Just some of the examples that you put up, you know, I've read stuff like that, but I just, the idea that, that that's being provided directly to kids is really shocking. And, uh, you know, if, if people want to go back to parts in this video where she's put stuff on the screen, please do. And just spend a little time with, with some of that and realize that that's in schools. It's, uh, it's really surprising to me. Yeah. My best friend, actually, she has a daughter who's 15 and she, her daughter checked out gender queer out of the library. And that's one of the most in the that's, news. And it's, yeah, I've heard that one. Yeah. And, and she's, my friend's a teacher in California and she re read it aloud with her daughter and said, Oh, it's fine. What? And, really? She was fine. With yeah. You? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And she's like, she's like, Oh, it was all over her head anyway. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I was very surprised. Mm. Um, and I don't, I wonder where that, where that comes from, you know, like, yeah, uh, well, so the, the the argument for inclusion of minorities, you you had that. That was one of the the two columns. You had two columns. One was does this have themes that in, that deal with racism? Does this have LGBTQ themes? So there's that argument, and I hear that that being put forth. Although I don't know why it has to be done in such an explicit form. But some of the examples that you've shown don't have anything to do with that. And as you demonstrated with those, with that spreadsheet, many of the books that are considered most explicit and most adult or inappropriate for children don't contain those themes at all. So what's the excuse for putting that in front of kids? Just violent or uh, the word was aberrant, but just explicitly aberrant sexual themes. Well, you can come up with any justification. Lies are, you see the, the consequence of lies in their fruit, right? And one of those is <clears throat> because you could say, oh, it helps them do this. It saved my life. That's one of the arguments. Um, we have a legislator who calls our school board president and says, this book saved my life. You got to turn it around. And they're like, oh yeah, because they have power and influence and but if you actually look at it survivors of sexual abuse they, they have a really hard time reading this stuff it's very triggering I even brought a counselor who was a forensic psychologist in who testified against groomers in court he was an expert witness and he said if this stuff were given to a survivor of abuse you would 
you would need to get counseling for them immediately because it's so triggering. So whatever their rationale is, whatever their reasons are, mm. you have to look at the consequences of doing that. And one of the consequences, they say it's not porn, right? It's just a description of the real world of assault that happened in this country and everything. But when girls especially are reading about sexual assault and they it terrifies them and makes them not want to have intercourse, right? And they or not want to be their own gender that's so vulnerable. And so even though you're like, it's not porn, it's not addictive. It's like, well, it could go the other way, even though it's not pornography, it's having the same type of an effect mm -hmm. on the opposite string. All of a sudden they're asexual, no sexual. They don't want to be female. They don't mm -hmm. want to ever have sex. Mm -hmm. And that's that's very sad and damaging because sex is a beautiful thing, right? Especially in a loving married relationship. And there aren't depictions of that in, in stories. I mean, I think Les Mis, there's, there's a, you know, it alludes to, to one <laughs> that is very positive instead of, you know, more carnally based. And, and we want sex to be, uh, you know, holistic and involve the soul and involve a union and a commitment and, and to go deeper and and really they're making it so shallow and about self-pleasure and and that's really generating a selfish society that's and, and i'm not saying that's bad pleasures pleasures um pleasure is good but but um, you're talking sex, about gratuitous hedonism though yes mm -hmm. and and i'm just saying we can do better Mm -hmm. And we need to do better for these kids so that they can have real fulfillment, real connection, because porn destroys connection. And it just, you go about for your own pleasure instead of finding the joy mm -hmm. of true human interaction and relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's very well said. I am, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm really stunned by this library thing, the, the American Library Association. And I'm going back to that and I'm wondering who's funding the ALA and who's in charge of it, who sits on the board, who's making these decisions? Because it seems like there's a group of people who are, who are deciding for, this, for the country that this is what we need to be doing. Right, um, the current president of the ALA is a lesbian Marxist. And um, so she believes in Marxism and not in, in okay. our current, you know, socialism and stuff. And um, <clears throat> they get money from the government mm -hmm. to accredit programs. So they get federal grants, lots and lots of money from federal grants. Okay. And I know that the, I believe, you know, this is my conspiracy theory, <laughs> just based on books that I've read, is that the por pornography industry also may be funding um them because in the 1960s there's documentation that they were when um and in the 1960s i believe is when the movie rating system came out because mm -hmm. someone was fighting obscenity in the communities um he was a i think the attorney general or something in california under reagan mm -hmm. and he um he was trying to get a law passed and the movie rating industry said no um we'll do it ourselves mm -hmm. and and that's when he documented that the pornography industry was behind funding the ALA who had librarians testifying against it, saying it went against the First Amendment. So this mm. this is a decades old fight, but now it's coming at our children instead mm -hmm. of our community. Mm -hmm. and, so, and now we have the better thing about this is now we have social media where we can get more people involved, like through your your channel for them to just stand up locally. You have to stand up locally because that you can because it is there and you must. And and we're hoping to make it easier to help anybody who wants to. And so thank mm. you for having this podcast to share this information and get it out. Oh, I'm really grateful that you wanted to come on and share it. Would you would you say all of your links again and, and all of your mm -hmm. resources again out loud for anybody who's listening? Yes, it's ratedbooks.org, R-A-T-E-D-B-O-O-K-S.org. And I would go to the getting started page. There's video tutorials. There's lists of the books. And um, you can connect with people in your area. And also at the bottom of rated books, you have my email, Mary in the library, USA at gmail.com. And our Facebook group is Laverna in the library. So you can connect with us any of those three ways.
Excellent. Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing this. I, I didn't know this yeah. resource existed and I think it's going to be really helpful to a lot of people. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, for and having I, me. I've really enjoyed this conversation. I feel like we could have gone deeper in lots of different directions and mm -hmm. I'm grateful that you took the time. Thank you very much. Thank you.